when September the 11th happened, about a week later, they noticed that church attendance went up 13%. Alcohol and drug consumption decreased. Because when I'm scared, I'm getting ready to snort some coke and a bear run through there on me. I do not need no drugs to get away from this bear. <laughs> or to have the energy to get away. You hear me? So, yes. So now we watch alcohol and drug consumption decrease. Uh, we looked at alcohol about six weeks later, had decreased about 20% to 30 And then all at once, church attendance leveled off to where it was, and alcohol consumption consumption went up about 40% more than before. What do that mean? Battered wives, battered women had a children, people killed from drunken driving, people killed from arguments because before I wasn't drinking, now I'm scared I am. A lot of people that stopped drinking and smoking have gone back because they're afraid because we're not aware that fear and God do not occupy the same space. So with this fear that exists today, today, uh, I talked to a group of wealthy Arabs Indians, sheiks, uh, Mediterranean Muslims at the King Foundation. They had a profile in the conference. And the profile in conference was not about police profiling black folk. It was profiling Arabs. And my speech to them was on September the 10th, y'all went to bed that night as honorary white folks. You woke up on September the 11th as honorary white folks. And then about 2 o'clock, that evening, you got your nigger call. <laughs> so y'all at the right place, because if anyone understands niggerology, we do. <laughs> now, I'm saying that to say yes. that they're telling us now that suicide bomber, they got information that'll probably go in a bank. Well, here's the problem I have with that. If you have a Bin Laden traveling on a Campbell and we can't catch him, and this dude ain't on no rocket, yes. he ain't traveling interstellastically, He's on a Campbell. Campbell cigarettes don't even use a Campbell. Yes. I mean, <laughs> here's a dude, every time they show him, he on y'all can't catch him. Give me a break. The other thing is, see, before Ben, now we was Ben, Ben ugly, Ben yes. lazy, Ben <laughs> shiftless, Ben late, Ben busted, Ben in jail, Ben crazy. After that, y'all been my friend for a long time. But when you look at here is a man that function in one of the most poverty-stricken areas in the world. I mean, you got folks over there that ain't never seen an electric toaster, let alone own one. He is $55 million reward. There's something wrong. I mean, you'd be killing people that just look like him. Yes, exactly. Trying to get this reward. And so when you stop and think about, here's a man... that there is a $55 million reward mm -hmm. on him. Now, he's supposed to be in one of the poorest areas on the planet, mm -hmm. and nobody's turned him in. Right. <laughs> now, let me tell you, there's another problem. If I'm disloyal to you, that with all of my poverty, I would bypass $55 million dollars, even military people, even military people that could come together and have the mechanism and the force to be able to go get him and get this money and could live good forever, plus whoever did it, America would let them live here. And nobody's able to do it. Now, here's something that's wrong. For America, for America to tell us that here's a group of people they're so dedicated to this man that no one will turn him in. But they're telling us that they're catching close comrades of his that's telling everything. It don't work. If you're not going to turn him in for $55 million, how are you going to tell me I'm telling you what the plans are? 
I mean, hot and cold don't equal the same spot. If if his man that they so loyal to him, they don't want $55 million, but after you catch me, I will tell you. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is the question you asked me. Black folks. If this is more than what they're telling us, and a bank is blowed up, and they say a suicide bomber did it. First, banks would be closed down all over the country, and everybody that got some money in the bank would be affected. Not like New York would be affected by it. Arabs, Indians, and those folks in them dresses would have to leave town in the morning on the police escort. That's how much fear exists in this country today. Now, we've had an incident. Uh, the president's State of the Union message seemed to scare people more. Um, if we spend a billion dollars a day with a war, dropping on folks that ain't got a Tosa, that one day that bill's going to come due. And it's going to be taken from the school, from the highways, from social services. And so a heck of a price is going to be paid for. Which has already begun. Yes. But to the tune that. And so this amount of fear that exists, we're able to, to do things and nobody asks simple questions when you are afraid. Uh, CBS ran a document of two French brothers that was doing a document and they captured both buildings being hit. Now, the problem with that is if I'm in front of your house taking some film to celebrate you and Bill's anniversary and uh, we're going to run it at a at a dinner next week and four cops get killed across the street and I film that, that's part of the crime information. How come them film? Yes. And how did CBS know about it? New York cops didn't know about it. The FBI and the CIA didn't know about it. So when you stop and think about where this is going now, that there's a lot of stuff that's suspended.